The following message has been brought to you by the Mile High Flood District. Voidfilled riprap, or VFR for short, is a construction material designed to emulate natural riffle rock material found in coarse gravel and cobble bed streams. It uses materials readily available from local sources in Colorado, but because this material combines around half a dozen separate rock products, each with their own variability, it requires special handling during the mixing and installation process. It also requires more engagement with a design engineer and construction inspector than either conventional or soil riprap installations. This video is intended to give you some background about the history and intended use of VFR, along with common problems to watch out for during an installation. The development of VFR was based on evaluations of rock in riffle pool complexes along natural streams. A riffle pool complex consists of a meandering channel that has scoured out pools in the bends and larger rock riffles in the straight sections. This is nature's way of dissipating energy. There are several natural riffle pool systems throughout the Denver metro area along the South Platte River, Bear Creek, and other mountain streams. This is an existing riffle along Bear Creek that was studied several years ago to help develop VFR. The channel bottom consists of coarse gravel and rock ranging in size from several inches to slightly over one foot in diameter. When you remove the top layer of rocks and dig deeper into the channel substrate, it is apparent that the rock mix is very well graded and contains sand and silt. Notice that other than the surface, where the flow has removed all but the coarse rocks, the material is mixed together in a densely packed mass. Cobbles fill the spaces between the larger rocks, gravel is wedged into the gaps between the cobbles, and then sand and silt fills the voids of the gravel. The result is an interlocked matrix that functions as a self-contained filter, where smaller particles are held in place by larger particles. With all the voids filled, water flows on top. The banks along Bear Creek are also comprised of the same well-graded rocky material and are well vegetated with riparian grasses, willows, and trees. So even though this material is rocky, there is sufficient fine-grained soil to provide a growing medium for vegetation. VFR was developed for use in stream restoration projects and other stormwater applications. The VFR mixture is designed to emulate natural riffle rock material like we observed at the Bear Creek site. VFR is comprised of conventional riprap with the voids filled with a well-graded mixture of cobbles, gravels, sands, and on-site soils. The mixture creates a dense interlocking mass that keeps water flowing on the surface, mimicking a natural mountain stream bed. VFR is commonly used for riffles and drop structures, bioengineering applications for string bank protection, rock line swales and rundowns, and erosion protection at culverts and storm outfalls. VFR is typically installed in areas without a self-replenishing source of large and small aggregate. The riprap sizing for VFR should be carefully considered during design because it needs to stay in place even during a 100-year flood. VFR is a more robust mixture and has distinct advantages over both conventional and soil riprap. VFR has the following unique characteristics. The well-graded mix of riprap, cobbles, gravels, sands, and on-site soils are packed together more densely than standard riprap, providing better interlocking and additional stability. Water flows on the surface of the riprap since there are no voids. This reduces the likelihood that flow will find a weak spot in the subgrade. 
VFR provides an effective internal filter, so there is no need for a separate underlying gravel bedding layer or geotextile fabric. VFR is very effective at preventing piping of the native fine-grained soils that it protects. When sized appropriately, VFR is a very effective stream bed material in areas where native soils are too fine to resist erosion. VFR also provides an effective growing medium where vegetation can establish. The void fill material supports riparian vegetation that not only adds aesthetic and habitat values to a stream corridor, but the roots also reinforce stream banks, reducing erosion and increasing stability. The ingredients to create VFR are available at local quarries and gravel pits. The primary ingredient is conventional riprap. The goal of VFR is to fill the voids of conventional riprap using a broad range of materials to emulate natural riffle rock. We want to avoid displacing any of the conventional riprap, we merely want to fill the voids. To fill the voids of large riprap like type M and larger, a 7 inch minus surge rock is used. The word surge means the material was run through a crusher to create a usable product. The word minus means the material is seven inches in diameter or smaller. The seven inch rock is blasted quarry material and contains angular rock ranging from one to seven inches in diameter. A four inch minus pit run is used to fill the voids of the seven inch rock. The phrase pit run means the material was mined straight out of the ground and is ready for use without being crushed. The four inch pit run comes from gravel pits along local rivers and is a predominantly sandy material that includes gravels and some smaller cobbles. This naturally rounded material is very effective for wedging into the voids of the seven inch rock and is the special ingredient that provides cohesion to hold the rock matrix together. Adding topsoil to the four inch pit run creates an excellent growing medium for vegetation. The seven inch surge rock and the four inch pit run are processed through only one screen at the quarry. So the gradations can vary quite a bit depending on the source of the material. Because of this variability, two additional materials are included in the mix. Two to four inch cobbles and type two gravel bedding material. At the start of construction and prior to ordering materials, it is important to submit laboratory tests of rock quality and gradations for all the VFR materials to the engineer and construction inspector for review. Given the minimally processed nature of the surge material and pit run, gradations may not be readily available from the suppliers and may require additional coordination. Once submittals are approved, delivery of materials can start. There are two types of VFR mixes in the district's standard specifications, one with river cobble and one without river cobble. The mix with river cobble provides a more natural looking riverbed material and includes conventional riprap, seven inch minus surge rock, four inch minus pit run, two to four inch cobbles, type two gravel bedding, native topsoil, and four to 12 inch cobble for top dressing. The materials for the VFR mix without river cobble are the same, except that a two to four inch crushed rock is used in place of the two to four inch cobbles. And the four to 12 inch cobble for top dressing is eliminated. One other variation is that for smaller riprap gradations like type VL and type L, the seven inch minus surge rock is eliminated from the mix. Please refer to the district's riprap specifications for more information on the different materials that go into the VFR mixes. Proportions of the different materials are specified in loader bucket units. When mixing, keep in mind that the proportions shown in the specs were developed with the goal of filling the voids of the riprap without displacing any of the riprap pieces. So the size of the initial riprap pile should not significantly grow as additional materials are added. 
we recommend an initial test batch be mixed with the inspector and engineer present. This will allow the visual observation of the various VFR ingredients, batch proportions, and mixing operations. A front-end loader scoops up each of the different materials according to the number of loader buckets specified and adds them into a combined mixing pile. The operator should ensure that each loader bucket comprises an equal volume of material. For example, if the operator is only able to fill the bucket partially with large riprap, but uses full buckets of fine material, the mix proportions will be incorrect. This can happen because of the force required to push the bucket fully into a pile of riprap. The operator also needs to use a large enough bucket so that they can carry a bucket load of well-graded riprap. This is more of a concern with larger riprap like type H. The full gradation of small and large material should be present in each bucket load. Once all of the ingredients are added to the mixing stockpile, the materials need to be thoroughly mixed using a loader or a large track excavator to fill the voids of the riprap without displacing the riprap or creating pockets of finer material. We recommend that a minimum of two batches, or double the proportions specified, be mixed for the test batch. We also recommend that the equipment operators involved in the test batch be the same operators involved with future mixing operations. Tweaking of the proportions is sometimes necessary to create a VFR that resembles natural riffle material. And because the gradations of the surge and pit run materials can vary, it is sometimes necessary to adjust mix proportions. For example, if the four inch minus pit run is lacking in cobbles, we can increase the proportion of two to four inch cobbles, or if the four inch minus pit run has a lot of cobbles, we can decrease the proportion of two to four inch cobbles. VFR can be challenging to place because it tends to segregate in transit. The finer sands and gravels tend to separate from the larger riprap. Care needs to be taken to minimize segregation when hauling the mixed material from the stockpile to the installation location. After a suitably compacted subgrade has been provided, the loose VFR material needs to be placed in a single lift of sufficient height such that final grade will be achieved upon compaction. Additional mixing with a track excavator is required after the initial placement to make sure the VFR is thoroughly mixed and that there is no segregation or areas where the VFR consists primarily of the smaller void materials. The mixing and placement process needs to result in some of the larger riprap flush and visible on the surface with rock arranged to minimize voids and smaller material filling the voids between and below the larger material. We don't want all the larger riprap to settle into the bottom and we don't want all the finer materials to remain on the surface. The interlocking nature of the riprap in the mixed material needs to remain essentially the same as if the riprap was placed without the void fill materials. After the VFR has been loosely placed and prior to compaction, the top dressing of the larger cobbles can be mixed in on the surface, if specified, for a more natural riverbed look. This is done by sprinkling a few cobbles such that they cover approximately 15% of the surface. The last step is to compact the loosely placed VFR by driving over it with a large heavy duty track excavator or a dozer. At the direction of the engineer, water can be added so the moisture content of the mixture is at optimum conditions during the compaction process. In overbank areas, we'll often add four to six inches of topsoil over the VFR. Topsoil only needs light compaction to prevent settlement. In the stream bed, we do not place topsoil because it would get washed away. This shows a finished VFR installation for a riffle structure at Cherry Creek. Notice how the water is running on the surface of the VFR and how well the vegetation has established along the side slopes that have buried VFR. This shows a post-construction photo of a VFR channel lining application on Marcy Gulch. 
Notice how the wetland grasses are able to grow within the VFR matrix. Segregation of VFR where sections consist primarily of smaller materials will create weak spots that are vulnerable to washout and can compromise the rock structure. This is the most common problem with VFR. Operators need to keep this in mind and take special care to avoid segregation when installing VFR and remixing in place when needed to eliminate weak spots. In these example photos, you can see a previous VFR installation where segregation occurred, and you can see the migration of the smaller materials. This is because a dense interlocking matrix was not achieved to hold that material in place. When VFR is transported from the staging area to the point of placement, the larger material and the smaller material tend to segregate. It's important that the operator remix the VFR at the point of placement. Projects that use VFR often need a larger staging area than what might be needed for either conventional or soil riprap. If you have a really confined project site, you may need to look for additional staging area for the delivery, stockpile, and mixing of VFR materials. The finished top elevation of the VFR layer needs to closely match design grades to within a tolerance of a tenth of a foot. Tight elevation tolerance will prevent flow from concentrating in any one area of the channel cross section. When grade adjustments are needed, it's critical to re-establish a well-graded interlocking matrix. So if for some reason the grade of the compacted material ends up too low, it's not acceptable to simply place small material on top to achieve final grade. Or if the grade of the compacted material ends up too high, it's not acceptable to scrape material off the surface because it could pluck larger material out of the mix and result in segregation. In both scenarios, the entire out-of-grade section needs to be remixed and recompacted to achieve the proper grade. After a few adjustments, an experienced operator can usually determine what uncompacted depth correlates to the desired compacted depth. Continuous inspection and adjustment by the contractor and inspector will help reduce these problems. The consistency and size of VFR ingredients can vary significantly. Variations can be attributed to different suppliers, change in production processes, change in sources, and even quality control at the quarries. A proactive way to identify issues before mixing and placing is to get five gallon bucket samples of each VFR ingredient and compare them with the specs. This is particularly important for the materials that tend to be more variable, such as the 7 inch minus surge rock and the 4 inch minus pit run. Materials delivered to the project site need to be kept in separate stockpiles. We recommend the inspector and the engineer be on site to review initial deliveries to verify the materials meet spec prior to delivery of large quantities. If the VFR is mixed in place correctly, the water will flow over and not through the VFR. If surface flow disappears into the VFR, additional void filling may be necessary. After the VFR has been placed, fine material tends to migrate to the bottom. In these situations, an engineer may direct the addition of smaller material. We typically use a 50-50 mix of the 4 inch minus pit run and type 2 bedding sprinkle it on the surface, and wash it in with water using a high pressure hose to fill any small voids that may exist below the surface. This should be done prior to compaction. After the washing in process, we shouldn't see much of this smaller material on the surface as it will get washed away during runoff events. Typically, erosion control blanket or coir mat is installed along sections of VFR that are buried with topsoil. However, unlike typical situations, the blanket should not be trenched at the toe as this displaces and can compromise the integrity of the VFR material. Instead, we recommend that at least one foot of the bottom edge of blanket be placed on top of the VFR, staked down, and then wrapped around the topsoil layer like a soil lift. Two by four wooden wedge stakes should be used to stake blanket that is covering buried VFR. We hope you found this video about VFR helpful. 
For more information, please consult the district's website where you'll find helpful resources like our criteria manual and RIPRAP specifications. Thanks for watching.